Marketing update of the week. Here we go. Opening night, Monday, obviously, November 7th, 8 p.m. UTEP. Doors open 90 minutes before for the students, uh, the corral, and I believe one hour before uh, for the general public, season ticket holders and all that. Um, in the corral, you got 2,000 t-shirts going out opening night. Um, kind of breaking news here. I think it's going to be pretty pretty cool swag. Uh, it's my understanding, something to do with McConaughey and the Moody Center and Bless the Mood and all this stuff going on. So I think it's going to be a pretty cool t-shirt. It's not just your standard free t-shirt night. I think it's a quality t-shirt. You can put my word on that. Um, also, the first 1,500 students or so are going to get free Southside pizza. I actually went there the other night with a couple of coaches. Really good. Austin's obviously the food capital of the world, in my opinion, but that's another great spot. We appreciate their involvement in Texas basketball and everything they do for the community and us. Um, you know, again, like, so this, this game sold out. Uh, if they come with some last minute available tickets because some of the groups maybe didn't use them, I think there'll be an announcement by the ticket office, it's my understanding, X amount of time before the game, 48 hours, 24 hours. I think, you know, certain fans kind of pay attention to that because I do think some available tickets will come available. Not many, but a select few. Um, and obviously, uh, I'm on the, on the third party market. That's how it works with um, the tickets being sold. So just encourage anybody that has tickets, obviously it starts with the students. You have a seat with your big ticket to sit in the corral, the best seats in the place, or the season ticket holders, you have a seat. Just encourage everybody to come to the game. Um, you obviously got to get here early. Um, got to understand um, where, where the arena is and, and, and what Austin is. So get there early. Encourage people to maybe even consider like ride shares and Uber and this kind of thing. I um, appreciate everybody's patience as we get it, all the kinks worked out. And um, obviously, please be in your seats and stay late. Um, you know, after the game, we've got some cool traditions going on. We hope everybody will uh, be a part of it and help us build this thing. On the nights where you can't come to the games, understandable, right? You've got kids. I've got kids. You go to church. I try to go to church. And, uh, you know, when things pop up, uh, just give your tickets to Longhorns. Make sure someone's in your seat and burn orange. We really, really appreciate it. But that's kind of the uh, the message for marketing this week. Thank you. Questions, please. What was the takeaway um, from the, the exhibition with Arkansas? Obviously, you guys played really well. What what was the message to the, to the team after that? Yeah, I think Arkansas game first, kind of the non-basketball part of it. Uh, it was great to kind of have a test run. Uh, dress rehearsal in a lot of ways in the Moody Center. And again, I want to thank uh, Coach Muss and Arkansas for doing it. There was a lot of flexibility in that game. Um, and those guys were nothing short of uh, great about it. Uh, they, they didn't get a uh, practice the night before. It wasn't the typical game. Uh, Coach Muss and those guys were very flexible, and we appreciate it. And I uh, just want to thank them, wish them the best this season. Um, but I mean, all sorts of things, some things we know we got to do better at, but we, we, we saw it, and then some things that were awesome. I thought the student section was unbelievable from baseline to baseline, and, and uh, we look forward to continuing that. So a lot of good things off the court. Um, in terms of the game, we got better. Um, the scoreboard was on, so everybody was kind of paying attention to it, but I, I think from our point of view, it really wasn't about the scoreboard. And I'm, I'm not sure um, Arkansas, I can't speak for them, but we went into the game kind of wanting to get some objectives done. Um, and, and the scoreboard really wasn't the, the top objective. We played different people, different rotations. Um, we got some guys some needed experience. I thought our freshmen did a great job, you know, getting their first kind of uh, run, get the kinks out early. Every one of our freshmen, if you think about it, played really well when they came back in the game. So just a lot of things like that. Defensively, you know, I don't think it's a secret. Uh, that, that could be a big part of our identity. We could be a really good team defensively. Um, and I think offensively, you know, I, I, I told you guys you would see some stuff that maybe you've been asking about nonstop, and hopefully you saw it with your own eyes. How much, how much more is this team what you want out of your team than it was last year? I mean, how, how much do you have the flexibility of players to do what you want to do? Yeah, I think every team's different. Every journey's different. So I don't think it's really about, you know, last year or five years ago versus this year. Every team's different. Again, I'm very appreciative of last year's team. And, um, you know, we'll talk about that team till, till I'm not talking. Uh, but this year's team, you know, I mean, it's just it's year two. You've, you've got some returners, and that always gives you some experience where guys can defend the culture and they kind of know what's going on. We don't got to spend 10 minutes every practice going over new stuff. Um, it's our first recruiting class at Texas in terms of young players, and that's all, always great. It's a burst of energy. Plus, they're some of our most talented guys. Um, so not, not so much comparing it to last year and the other team, but this year's team, you know, we like it. We 
uh, a lot of internal optimism. We have some strengths, we have some potential weaknesses, but um, you know, it, we look forward to a long season. I think that we could be really relative throughout the season. I think we can be good early, and I think we can be really good late. Um, yeah, but that's coaching. I don't know about getting on it. You got to remind guys all the time. You know, if if uh, if all of us were disciplined enough to do what we we're supposed to do every time, there wouldn't be coaches, there wouldn't be teachers, there wouldn't be all sorts of things. So I think Muhammad Ali said it best. You know, he was the biggest and baddest of all times, and they asked him why he had his trainer uh, Dundee. I think um, they said, you know, and Ali said, Do you, you know, you know nothing about winning if you're asking me that. Like, I mean, I have to have somebody to push me and. Um, you know, this is coaching and this is teaching. So, um, yeah, not only just the offensive pace we want to play at, but everything we have to constantly kind of remind our guys that's what teaching is. Arturio said, when I asked him what he brings, he said, winning. I know how to win. And he was a freshman who admitted he didn't really know how to play defense. So what, what do you see from him on a day-to-day basis that shows you he knows how to win? Did you guys get that on video about him talking about his defensive weakness? Yeah, that's great. I'm gonna, that's perfect. That's my gift for today. Uh, kind of like free salsa, you know, that, that's even better. Um, no, I think all of our players, um, again, it's it's kind of an interesting dive into our roster. You know, like every one of our uh, freshmen in this year's class played in the state championship game. And I, I guess, uh, what, two guys won it, but every one of our freshmen won. You take a step back and you look at their summer seasons and they're all winners. They've all played for great programs. So, um, yeah, I agree with that. I think anything that could be kind of labeled on every one of our young guys is winning. And a part of that is, you know, great coaching. They all played for great high school coaches and great summer coaches. Um, but, yeah, I would agree with that. Winning's a part of all of our freshmen's identities. Yeah, I think every situation's uh, different. You know, we're going to recruit the best players in the world here at Texas as the rules continue to change, whether it be professional opportunities or NBA draft age and all this. You know, we recruit in a transparent way. We recruit through relationships. We try to get as much information on each uh, player and their family and their circle, just like they're doing that on us. They're trying to get as much information as they can on our program in Texas. Um, but I think it's kind of each of them is case by case. Um, you know, D. Mitch was one of the best players in his class. He had options. I don't want to speak for him, um, but I think he's exactly where he wanted to be, and that's Texas. He's in a great spot, and his future is undeniable. Chris, I know you talked a lot at this time of year, though, with so many new pieces and moving parts for us, you know, fluidity with lineups and playing time and minute distribution. Is that, is that, that stuff still fluid this year, or when you've got a return for it, does it make it easier to figure out? Yeah, well, I mean, our minutes in rotation are based on production. And we've got practice here in about 15 minutes. And, um, you know, guys will have to produce today uh, to earn the right to play on Monday night. You know, a lot of questions today, but you guys know the season starts on Monday. We're playing UTEP, first game ever in the Moody. And let's talk about UTEP. They have one of the best coaches in college basketball. Many of you know him because uh, you're familiar with his Abilene Christian team and what he built there. I think everybody in this room understands what UTEP basketball is, one of the historic programs, not only in our state, but really the country. Three teams from the state of Texas have played for the national championship and two have won it. UTEP is one of those. Um, it's a basketball school. John, uh, I mean, Joe has done a great job, um, you know, building the program quickly. They're relative, man. 20 wins in his first season. Um, you know, inherited Rodney Terry's culture and some of his players, and now Joe's putting his own stamp on it. They're an older team. I'm sure some of you guys will do the work and kind of look at their roster, maybe one of the oldest teams in college basketball because they're basically transfer heavy. I don't believe they have a freshman in their rotation, four or five Division One transfers that were mostly all-conference players in their last spots, and then uh, some talented junior college guys. So Joe has a system, um, you know, pressure defense, uh, they're going to try to make us turn the ball over, and we're going to try to take care of it. So it's kind of the game within the game. Um, but Monday is going to be tough. It's not uh, one of these you know, teams and games that some seasons start with uh, where we all know, you know what's going on in that game. You know, this is a game, in my opinion, 
UTEP has a chance to be an NCAA tournament team this year. They're really well coached. They're talented. They're old. They're experienced. So we'll have to play really well on Monday night, uh, you know, to defend our home court. Um, you know, I worry a little bit about the pressure of the building. I've been open about this and talking to the guys about it. We can't let the um, you know, the glitz and all this of the first game ever in the Moody Center become more important than the 40-minute game. So, you know, we all know this is going to be a special night in Austin, special night for the Moody Center, special night for Texas because it's a world-class facility. Um, but the basketball game, you know, is, is what we're trying to stay focused on internally. Um, and UTEP's really good. You know, I'm concerned about this game. Um, and I, I think our players understand what's at stake too. Yeah, it's a good question. You know, it's the game within the game. Um, you know, when you think of defenses, obviously, you know, defense don't let the other team score. Um, but it's not that simple. Every defense kind of has an identity. As a competitor in competition, you try to figure out what the other guy's doing, and then you try to figure out, you know, how you can be successful and not them. So with UTEP and Joe Golding coach teams, it's it's pretty obvious. There's going to be great pressure on the ball. Um, there's going to be great denial in the passing lanes. He's not going to let us just make easy passes from A to B. There's going to be a physicality. There's going to be an athleticism to their defense. They're going to play extremely hard. Um, and so, you know, our objective offensively is to take care of the ball um, and try to establish our identity. And um, it'll kind of be the tell of both teams. And y you'll see what's going on quickly. It it's not, you know, one team will impose their will and one team won't be able to. And that'll be kind of the key to the game. And it might change throughout the 40 minutes. Um, but we just got to make sure that we play Texas basketball, um, e even though we're playing against one of the best defenses in college basketball. Yeah, it's a, I appreciate the question. Irvin Davis, uh, I've never had a better friend in life, and I've never had a better um, colleague in basketball. Uh, I met Irvin Davis, Big E, when I was an assistant coach at North Texas. Uh, I mean, Big E was one of our graduate assistant coaches, and just basically have had a, a, a you know, two-decade-long relationship with him. Um, Big E had been a really good high school basketball player himself at Irving Nimitz, and then um, was really involved in a lot of the DISD schools and basically started an AAU team and gave kids an opportunity to play on the biggest stage that maybe weren't going to get that opportunity. So in other words, he never had a shoe contract. He never had the four- and five-star players for the most part, even early in his career. Dallas Showtime helped a lot of kids. I'm not talking about basketball. I'm talking about helped kids get in college. Big E was the kind of guy that would treat his 14th player just like his best player and he built a program that was really, really nationally known. They won the circuit on the Under Armour circuit several times. And um, we lost Big E too early. Um, it was COVID related uh, right after the July cycle. And um, you know, we, just let, we lost him too early, but he was a personal friend. Um, Terrio had grown up playing in the Dallas Showtime. Recruiting is always about relationships in some form or fashion. Um, and so Big E was a big reason that uh, Terrio ended up in this program. He's a big reason we recruited him. And um, I appreciate you asking that. Irvin Davis, he's a he's like a Dallas legend. Um, there's nobody that's helped more kids in the Metroplex through basketball uh, than Big E. And a fascinating guy, too. Basketball didn't define him. He, he uh, had a bachelor's and master's degree from North Texas. It's my understanding he never made anything less than an A his whole academic uh, career. He's just a fascinating guy. He would always be the guy that I would call to talk about non-basketball things too. Like, you know, a presidential election goes down, I would just call Big E because I don't check all that news stuff. I'd say, what, what's going on, man? And he would always tell me if there's something going on, like the economy or something, what's going on with that? So Big E was like my source. He was like my CNN.com. So uh, I miss him daily. He's a really important part of uh, Terrio's life and equally an important part of my life, uh, Irvin Davis. Thank you all. Thanks.